so y'all know we're teaching on destructive dysfunctions that if not careful, even Christians uh, could allow these destructive dysfunctions in their lives. And we're, we know those destructive dysfunctions that we're going to be dealing with this year on Bible study night. One is enabler, two is emasculation, and three is t entitlement, the false sense of entitlement. Uh, but before I go there tonight, there are some things... Um, this week, I'm just going to share with you my thought processing for the week. Um, it's been a s sort of calm posture that I've had this week while observing what's continually to take place in the world. And all of us are familiar with what's taking place uh, today with the COVID situation, the mandates that are going on, and all of the circumstances surrounding that, and how people's lives are being dramatically impacted by that. Now, as Christians, We've already been forewarned. We're already knowledgeable that these times that we're in, God already let us know that these were the times would come. These times would come. So as believers, we already have been made aware of these times. However, what I've been paying attention to, no matter how much God has made us aware that these times would come, I, there's a two-fold arena here. One is of the believer, and the, the, the second arena is those who are secular, who do not necessarily, either they don't choose to agree with God's word, or they, they know God's word, but they just don't want to participate. But what's been a sobering posture for me is to pay attention to what's happened and to, to hear the responses of people who are no longer and who have walked away from their fervent relationship with Christ. Now, I can't tell you where their relationship with Christ is wholly. But what I can say is I'm, I'm hearing that the level of relationship, the depth of the relationships with some people has begun to become waned. And some of that has come as a result of not fellowshipping together, assembling themselves together. And so, you know, they hung on by a thread for some time by watching their church assemble, not even assemble, but watching their pastor, teacher, teach by way of video, social media. But that began to wean because God had a plan for the assembly together. And I'm not speaking on whether churches are assembling or not, but I am speaking to I'm hearing uh, in masses people who are drifting away from the intentional and intense fellowship they once had with Christ. It's no longer there. And then I'm talking to quite a few people, and I'm addressing this tonight, though we're talking about the dysfunction of the enabler. I'm talking to you guys because I'm speaking to this because the purpose, this is a discipleship training that I'm doing. And as I'm doing this discipleship training by teaching on these three uh, destructive dysfunctions, I want you to be aware of what's taking on because we're, I'm training, this is discipleship training. So now, and I, I, you hardly ever hear me address it, this thing about the new Hebrew Israelites thing about, and it's, 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 there are so many things out here that have a seducing spirit. 
behind it. And it, it comes uh, sim like Black Lives Matter. It's, it's, it's similar to this Black Lives Matter thing. See, Black Lives Matter and, and, and other social forms like this, it's not just that. There are other social forms like this, and it's social conditioning, right? But what it, what it emphasizes is it emphasizes Black Lives Matter, but can I answer you a, ask you a question? What life does it? Hello? Because what, what, what I hear emphasizes the Hebrew Israelites and Black Lives Matter. Okay, until we all get to a place where we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and I don't care what color you are, whether you're white, black, orange, red, yellow, whatever color you are, that is in God's eyes, no matter what color you are, we all need to come under the blood of Christ. And we need to come in submission to God. See, it, so, can I say it this way? So there's no color or race of people that's going to be greater than another. Because if you, if you say that white people are higher and black people are lower, if you switch the two, you think the black are going to do better than the white? If you put the black and the white down, you think the orange is going to do better than the black and the white? No, for all have sinned and come short of the glory. Hello? How many have sinned? So it doesn't matter what color you are, does it? Hello? Did he say only blacks have sinned? Did he say only whites have sinned? Did he say only Chinese have sinned? No, he said how many have sinned? So to try to replace somebody, and even with this Hebrew Israelite, I got to address this stuff because now it's, it's, it's and, and they would say, well, you're ignorant of the things. No, I'm not ignorant of what's necessary. You could do all your backdrop about maps, locations, who was here first, where were we planted, and all of that. That's fine, and that's great. But when you start trying to exalt yourself to make yourself better than somebody else because of your race and because you think God preferred a particular race of people, God prefers his children. God gives his benefits to his children. Huh? And whatever color you are, regardless of what color you are, if you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and you allow Jesus Christ to become, you enter into a place where through him you are now able to call Father, Abba, Father, through Jesus Christ. Because the only way we can call him Abba, Father is through Jesus. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what city you were born in. Doesn't matter what nation you were born in. Hello? So, how many lives matter? How many lives matter? How many? And see, so, so I'm teaching this because I want, because this enablement thing, because it, 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 it caters to this enabler, because what it does, do, this enabler, being an enabler, it, you can, like I said before, you can be an enabler one or two ways. You can be an enabler non-intentional or on purpose. Hello? Hello? Boy, I want to say some stuff. But I won't. I'll hold my peace there. But I want to talk to you guys because I want you to understand. We're going to pick up, but there's some things that... Right before I got here, I, I had my thing laid out, but this is some things I want to share. I want you guys to be reminded, put you in remembrance of these things. And I think Paul did this at time, just to put you in remembrance, because there's constant, constant, constant information. And, and, and it, it, the information is, th there is an intentional plan to saturate people with information. That's why God wants us to meditate in the word day and night. Why? Because the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And the word will begin to shine a light on us that we can have a discernment between 
light and darkness, and even when it has a, it appears as an angel of light, you and I, we will be able to see through it. Huh? In other words, we won't be deceived with every wave and form of doctrine. Come on, somebody. See, see, and that's why it's Christ-centered. And what's happening is, this is where it is. It, it, Jesus said it. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. That's why when we gather together, we need, hallelujah, I hear you, Holy Spirit, we need to make sure what church we're going to. Are we going to a church that is Christ's church? Hello? See, see, and, and, and this, and I believe it's a shaking because now you, you're going to have to be able to determine why do I attend where I go? What, what am I trying to accomplish by me being there? Come on, somebody. See, because the, the, you will be able to learn how to endure hardship as a good soldier. Because wherever there are people, there will be problems. But when you know on whom your redemption draweth nigh and whom your redeemer is and why you're doing what you're doing and the church you belong to is God-centered, then you can go through and you know that many other places are righteous, but God delivers you out of them all. And you know that only the enemy is trying to move you off your post. But when you know it's God's church, you hold your ground. When you know it's whose church? God's church. But when it's your church, because you've now shaped church to only, the, hear what the Holy Spirit has to say, when you've made church only about your criteria, and if that church doesn't meet your criteria, see, that's your church. As long as the church meets God's criteria, it's God's church. But if you only go to church because it meets your criteria, that's not God's church. That's your church. Amen. And he didn't say the gates of hell would not prevail against your church. Hello? Amen. And that's where, the, see, see, here, I'm training disciples tonight. Because you, you're going to have a lot of people that got an opinion about the church in these days. And guess what they got an opinion about? They don't have an opinion about Christ's church. They got an opinion about their church. And if where they're going doesn't fit their criteria. Hello? I said Hello? You, you and I, we, can, we have to stay with this word. Because in these last days, I'm telling you, perilous times shall come. And they're here. And, and, and here's what's happening. I'm doing okay, Holy Spirit. You are really helping me out. Colossians 3 and 2. I'm trying to, matter of fact, we'll come back to that. Go to 2 Timothy 2 Timothy 4 and 3. When you have it, say amen. Read. Okay, let's say it again. For the time will come when they will not endure what? Sound. Sound doctrine. So what doctrine are they looking to hear? See, sound doctrine may not fit your criteria. It may not fit what you think God should be like, or what you think church should be like, how you think the people should be, how you think the things should be operating. And see, see, that's all your opinion. 
But see, that's not sound doctrine. Somebody say, my opinion, my opinion. may not be sound. I, I, y'all might want to write that down so you can remind yourself. And as you are learning how to become disciple, you can begin to hear people and then you can begin to translate. Hmm, we're, we're learning about this. The Bible is teaching us that expressly in the latter times, this is where we will be. And you know what people want to do? They want to hold God hostage to their opinion. And then they'll stop going to church and say that they'll, they'll accuse God's church, not just any church, but they'll accuse God's church of being ungodly because it doesn't fit their criteria. Hello? And the, see, but we can't measure God's church by our opinion nor by our emotions, but we measure God's church by what? The word of God. I don't measure God's church by my opinion. Hello. I'm teaching tonight. Hear what Holy Spirit has to say unto you. Because see, this is what you need to understand. Evil communication corrupt good manner. If you're subject to being emotional and you're subject to being ruled by your opinion, when other people have an opinion that begins to kind of line up with your opinion, you are possibly to be swayed. Because you're so opinionated. And that's not how we're ruled. The Bible says that we are, to, they will not endure sound doctrine. You, so if, if you're not enduring sound doctrine, what do you have a propensity to lean towards? Hello? What you think, what you believe, how you feel. And don't you know that the enemy will send people just like that to you? Hello, you got to hear God. No, please hear Holy Spirit. Is he trying to help you tonight? Because what he wants you to understand is don't walk away from this right here. Don't be turning to other books this, and then reading other books more than you read the Bible. And I'm telling you, the enemy is using all kinds of tactics to draw people away from the word. And God said, it's my word that's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, not your favorite book. Hello? I said what God's word says. Hello? Are y'all hearing because this is what, because I'm telling you, God wants disciples, people who can hold their ground, not be passive, neither passive aggressive. You cannot allow, a disciple has to be sound, holding their course, not swayed, and neither persuaded by somebody else's opinion about things they know nothing about. And even if they say, well, I read the whole Bible, so what? Jesus said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. For in hearing and not doing, you're a deceiver of your own self. So people talk about, I read the whole Bible, and so I can tell you all about the Bible. You can't tell me nothing. What you can tell me is why, how much of the Bible you live. Not how much of the Bible you read. The Pharisees and the Sadducees constantly reminded Jesus of all they knew. And Jesus said that what they're telling you is correct, but don't do nothing they say because they don't do the stuff they know. I'm, Holy Spirit is giving this. This is some clear stuff. And yeah, we're still talking about enablement, but see what I'm trying to help you to be warned so that you don't become an enabler so you're not seduced. 
Because you, the enemy can use you to enable people with a wrong posture. Holding on to wrong teaching. And, and, and it's not even things you're being taught. It's things that you're embracing and that you're not willing to let go of. You're stubborn. Hello? Hear Holy Spirit. You, some of the things that you're holding on to that you think you're protecting yourself by is what's destroying you. Because if it's not God's word, it's you. You might want to write that down. If it's not God's word, it's you. It's you. It's you. I'll show you. Stay with the word. First Timothy four and one. And I'm telling you, God wants you to know there are Satan. He walks to and fro as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Don't you know that the, the enemy, when he presented himself before the Lord, uh, before the throne concerning Job, don't you think, why was he able to say, if you'll take the hedge away from Job, that means he studied Job's life. He walked to observing Job. Don't you know, if he's walking to and fro as a lure and lie, seeking whom he may devour, don't you know that he did the same thing with Job? He's doing the same thing with us? You don't think he's walking to and fro, observing some of your stubborn behavior, mindset, who you're in association with, who you have a propensity to listen to, who you allow to influence you, who you have soul ties with, who you are willing to, to compromise God's word with, who you're in sin and cahoots with. Do you not know the enemy is studying you and that he's waiting to create a big alley? See, he's not going to do it all at once for everybody. He's going to throw it out like breadcrumbs. Do you not know that the enemy knows the word? He knows a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. I'm, see, and see, and this is what happened with disciples. They couldn't handle certain Jesus' teaching, and so one day all of them walked away, except the 12. And then he turned to the 12 and said, well, y'all almost also leave. Because see, discipling, it starts to deal with you so that you can understand your propensity. And some disciples couldn't handle it and they walked away from Jesus Christ because Jesus was confronting them so that they would understand them so that they would be able to know the difference and what it requires. See, people say, I love the Lord. You might appreciate God for certain things he do, but you may not love him. You might like him for certain things he do. You might be grateful for the things he's done for you, but you may not love him. This is discipleship talk. This is, this is not for, the, this is not for the, the faint of heart. This is real discipleship talk because Jesus confronted why why say you love me? If you love me, keep my commandments. Why call me friend? My friends are those who do what I say. Why callest me thou me Lord and you don't do what I tell you? This discipleship talk. Uh, hello, what kind of talk is it? Huh? What kind of talk is it? See, and see, and see, this is for, this is growing up message. See, this is, so you, you, so you can begin to recognize, hmm, and I'm, am I enabling people by continually giving people milk when they need to be eating meat? Am I being passive with people that need to be 
firm, sternly corrected? Hello? Did we get the first Timothy 4 and 1? Read. Did we read it? No. Read. In the latter times, once again, some shall do what? And with churches closing? Now, I only talked about the intensity of fellowship, but there are people that are telling me that people are totally walking away from Christ. They're no longer assembling in themselves. They're walking away. And guess what they're giving heed to? They're Look what it says. Look at the order. It says, some shall depart from the faith, but guess what they're doing? They're walking away from Christ. But see, you ain't, you ain't going to just be idle. See, you got to need. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. You're either gathering or you're scattering. There's no such thing as I'm just doing nothing. I, I have, no, no, no. You drawn to something. If you're either walking with Christ or get doing what? Giving heed to what? You're not just, I, you, see, if you walk away from Christ, something's got you. Hello? I, you better hear Holy Spirit. Follow the word in context. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed. The reason they departed, because they gave heed to seducing spirits. And, and yeah, we'll get there. To seducing spirit. Seduce. What does seduce mean? Do you understand what seduce means? Draw you in. Drawn in. Drawn away. Drawn. That's why we can't afford, see, Holy Spirit is trying to teach some of us we can't afford to allow ourselves to be governed by our emotions, by our opinions, neither by the emotions or opinions of someone else, regardless of what kind of platform they were trying to stand on. Mm, they'll take a, the enemy don't care what he has to use. He'll use a civil rights platform as a seducing mechanism. He'll use racial inequality as a seducing mechanism to create a division in the body. He'll use a COVID-19. He doesn't care. Seducing spirits the enemy doesn't care as long as it does what he's trying to get it to do. And he don't care if he has to use the church as a seducing spirit mechanism. If the church will give in to allow him to be in the church, he'll take it. Hello? Let me get the brass hats. He don't care if he could have to use you. See, see, people are like, what do you mean? Well, the enemy, the devil cannot possess a Christian. But, somebody say, but. But, but he can't oppress a Christian. And if the Christian will give him place, that's why God says, give no place to the devil. He can't take over you, but if you were willing to give him a place, he'll certainly take it. He can't overtake you. He can try to agitate you, frustrate you even try to bully you but he can't possess you but if we give him a place he certainly can he will certainly take it somebody say stay with the word pastor somebody say stay with the word pastor the 
Bible says, don't give place to the devil. So which means you can give him a place. Amen. Hello? Amen. So some shall depart from the faith. So, it, so, so all of this, thank you, Holy Spirit, I hear one of these lies is talking about there's no such thing as black sizing. It just told you right here. One say, if I always say, it don't say that script, that ain't what the scriptures say. The scriptures say, some shall depart from the faith. Some people talk about, well, I received Jesus Christ into my heart when I was 13. And, were well, you 28? Will you, where is he at today? Hello? And, 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 and see, this is, and it, this is a great time to talk about enabling because some people say, well, if you receive him at 13 and you live it like the devil today, you're still going to hell. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Jesus deals with this all throughout the scripture. Do you not know he confronted Peter in his behavior and said, get behind me, Satan. And he was one of his disciples. He dealt with his behavior. Judas was one of the disciples. People talking about when I was 11, 12, 3, 9, 12, 13. Okay, that could, as long as your walk is held this course, you cool. But I'm not, but I'm not going to tell you you're going to hell or heaven. But you need to line your life up with the word and determine, does my life reflect what Jesus said? If I'm saying I'm a Christian, does my life demonstrate that? Because you now have an opinion about Christianity, but does it line up with the word? Your opinion is once I did that, I'm always saved. Where is that in the scriptures? So we're talking about enablement. I'm, 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 ha I'm having to go this direction because it was on my spirit right before I came here. Because it's, it's, I've been walking in just this and it's sober. Because it, this world, man, it, 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 it's placating people. It's playing people. And guess what people's, oh my God, Holy Spirit, help me. Are y'all learning anything? Yes. Literally, are you learning anything? Because yes. when you, I'm trying to help you so that when you get home, you're not enabling by false doctrine being spread from your mouth. Because you have people in your households who will not submit to Christ and you're all saying, okay, it'll be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Hold on a minute. You better line up your teaching with the word. I understand the difference between calling those things that be not as though they are and also addressing what is. Huh? <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm going to have to be dramatic here. <laughs> you got a rapist living in your house. You call those things that be not as though they are. That they're delivered from raping. But uh, you have to deal with what is. Can't remain there. Raping people. So while I'm calling the rapist spirit out of them, be not as though they are, I have to deal with what is. Hello? This is how children have been molested in homes because parents didn't want to deal with the issue. But I'm talking to disciples today. This is better teaching. We, 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 we're, 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 God has done a work in us so that we can do a better work for others. We can be better. Somebody say we can be better. We can be better. 
So does everybody see here, see that this doctrine seduces spirit because people are going into church, practicing religion, saying, hey, I'm willing to, if I can go out and live like I want to, hey, I'll make Jesus Christ savior of my life. I say Jesus come into my heart, be my Lord and my savior. Because my I'm sealed for the rest of my life. I can go and live how I want to. And I'm going to heaven. <laughs> See, some shall depart from the faith, but they might not even know they departed. Because they living under false doctrine. But somebody said, I can't teach that doctrine. I got to stay with the word. Hello? He even said it. I hear you, Holy Spirit. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And for the rejection of it. So when it's some departing from the faith, thank you, Holy Spirit. Why? Giving heed to seducing spirits and what else? So they departed from the faith, giving heed to doctrines of devils. Hello, and you, yeah, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Some of you might have them family members bringing doctrines and devils into your house. That's why Jesus must be the head of the church, the chief cornerstone, so, so that we don't dilly-dally away from what God's message says. Because I'm going to tell you, if, if, this is what people like to do. <laughs> people like to do, we're just going to have a fellowship, and everybody can have an opinion. Everybody, we just come together. There's no authority. We just all come together, and we share our likes and our dislikes and whatever, and everybody's opinion matters and all of that. But wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't gather together for opinion. That's not what we gather for. God never called a person to give a, 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 a message of opinions. He called a person to teach his word. For this word is sharper than any two-edged word, piercing through the marrow and the bone. It's this word. Somebody says it's God's word. It's not my opinion. Not my opinion. Neither is it the opinion of my friends. Not my opinion. Or my family. Or my family. Read this scripture one more time. Read it. Right here. Spirit speaketh, speaketh expressly, specifically. Expressly, in this context, I believe, means specifically. No questions. Read on. Depart means it, you can't depart from something you never was at. You can't say I departed from food line if you were never at food line. So to depart means you were once there, doesn't it? Everybody went to school long enough to know that the part means you were once at a particular junction in order for you to depart from the junction. Everybody got that? So we all agree that it says some shall, some shall what? Depart from the faith. So there were some that were in the faith that no longer are in the faith. Hello? So don't be out there lying to people. <coughs> I said, don't be out there what? Lying. God hates lying. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. And so not don't be one out there giving a doctrine that's not of God. That's why I'm trying to get us as I'm trying to get in your hearts and minds 
to understand. This is why I, I guess I can go ahead and get this commercial. I'm so emphatic about you being fruit producers. It's not because a selfish ambition on my part. It's because this is what you were created for. Or otherwise, what's the point? I'm not here to cheerlead you going through the mechanics. I'm not here to puff you up for something that's not really distinctly and sincerely and intentionally a God ordained agenda. That's not my calling. I am here to edify you to good works, to provoke you to what? Good works. To not only the good works in this context, but good works in the context of God's work he called you to. And I'm here to provoke you to producing and having major fruit that remains and to be about your father's business and to make a sure distinction that you're in this world, but you're not of it. What the world pursues, that's not your pursuit. Let me show you. So I teach from an eternal perspective so that you can have eternity in your heart and mind. Because let me tell you, these doctrines of devil, they want you to live here and have this life here your main focus. But can I ask you a question? Have you asked them, well, after I leave here, what am I going to endure for eternity if all I did was pursued what you talked about down here? If there is a life after, what will it be like for me? I say, have you asked anybody you've been listening to? Woo, I'm about to get bold right now. Have you asked anybody you've been hanging out with? All we're doing is trying to go to the club. All we're doing is trying to get some money. All we're trying to do is get a new car. All we're trying to do is get a better house. All we're trying to do is get some new clothes. All we're trying to do is get a better husband. All we're trying to do is get a better wife. All right. Okay, when we got all that, now what? When I leave this life, can your dumb, ignorant friends tell you what's your life going to be like after you leave here? And aren't you supposed to be the called out one to be telling them, hey, 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 this is temporary. Aren't you the call? I don't want to be telling me, hey, hey, all oh, that's cool, but hey, you better have some balance and some right focus. Aren't you the call? I don't want. Didn't Jesus Christ save you so you can tell them ignorant people a better way? What do you think he saved you for? To be bewitched by their seducing spirit? Hello? I'm called to be bold like this, not, not to perform, but to draw you to a place in Christ where you can have a better understanding and that you can hold on to something of value. Hold on to something solid. All other stuff is sinking sand. It's temporary. It's not eternal. You will not get any rewards for the house you live in down here. You will not get any rewards for your bank account down here. You will not get any rewards for your Giamatti suit, your Gucci shoes, your diamond rings, your fancy cars, and other things. They're not going to be rewarded in heaven. But you were called to be able to tell somebody that. But what are you telling them? The enabler. Do you not know God holds you accountable for that? Warn the wicked. Because if you don't, their blood is on your hands. Especially your kids. Tell them knuckleheads. If y'all don't like it, I don't care. Help. 
you hanging out with the wrong kind, you better get some clear sense about yourself. Colossians 3 and 2, I'm trying to say something to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm, this is just, we, I, I'm going to pick back up on what, brushing things off, but I believe I'm compelled to remind you while we're saying what we're saying so that you have clear understanding. Why don't you have more fruit? Is it because your focus is elsewhere? Because <laughs> let me tell you something. Some of you have strong ambitions. You can accomplish what you want to accomplish. So it's not that you can't do it. It's just simply that your interest is elsewhere. You can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to Holy Spirit and get away with it. Hallelujah. I say you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to Holy Spirit and get away with it. You are supposed to have fruit in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And do you not know that more people talk more about the size of their house, the, the cost of their car, the size of their diamonds, the type of suit they got on, more than they'll ever talk about anything they've done for Christ? You and I are not supposed to be that way. And guess why it's possible with that we are? You have to go back to that seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and make sure that we're not practicing. Though we're not affirming that's what we le le learn, nor we're, that's not what we're affirming that that's what we believe, but if that's how we live. John de Leboshia. See, I tell you, this discipleship teaching tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we learn the word here. Yeah, but how do you, what do you live? <laughs> yeah, we learn the word. We get good teaching over there. But what do you apply? <laughs> I'll do it. I'll say it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we, we learn the word. We go through the word. Absolutely. But what part of the word do we live? Under. Yeah, you ain't going to get a billion YouTube followers here because this ain't what they consider to be your best life. But what you don't understand is this is the best kind of life. Amen. Yeah, because you, what the people don't understand is you got to determine what is the life I'm living bearing fruit for my eternity? Because I'm either bearing fruit for one direction or other. Hello, but do you teach that? And before you teach it, do you live that way? I'm talking about sobriety because this world has been drunken with the cares of this world, the lust of this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And people are drunken with this world. And, oh, and intoxicated with this world system and with this world's passions and with this world's pursuits and with this worldly lust. They've fallen in love with the world. And they still go to church because it's simply like a drug. Ha. I'm talking like a disciple. Ha. I'm trying to teach like a disciple so that we don't go out there mimicking doctrines of devils. Amen. Mimicking seducing spirits. Going to church. Oh, the, lo the enemy loves churches filled with form of godliness. But in love with the world. Drunken by the world's passions. When you get to the brass tacks of things, <laughs> you begin to, to put off that old man. <laughs> you begin to be clothed in humility. 
Oh, you begin to walk away from the worldly passions and lust of the world, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, and you begin to pursue God wholeheartedly. Now you become dangerous. Are you understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? Because get, see, see what we got to get away from is treating the church like a club. Mm ha. See, you you all you go to some people not accusing anybody of anything, but it's just the truth. Some people go to church to be entertained. It's just like going to the club. I put on my best dress. I put on my high heels. To go to church to be like the club. To be entertained. I got, I got, I got my social gathering. I got all my friends. I got all them, and we go, we gonna have a good time. And there's nothing wrong with having a good time at church. That's what I'm saying. But if you're coming to church simply to have a good time, but you missed out on what God wants—a godly change. God wants us to continually be transformed. Hello. And that transformation should be evident by some fruit. Not all this lip service. Jesus confronted them lip services all the time. Constantly challenging people who got a lot to say but have no fruit to show for it. The evidence of their life didn't didn't line up with all that talk. And see, just see, and it's when you got the enabler begins to tell people when you come out of being an enabler, you become an empowerer. Hey, put your money where your mouth is. Quit writing checks your butt can't cash. If you say it, then do it. Be about your father's business. Don't be trying to prove to me. Just get it done. Hello. Amen. I said we need to be about whose business. But see how many people are about our father's business, but yet are about our own. And see, this is what I'm trying to say. Eternal perspective. Read right here. Colossians 3, verse 2. Read. Set, Set whose affection. See, see, here's the problem. It's, I, I can't help others with their affection until I've learned and developed to set my own affection. I got to draw my affections in and direct my affections. This is good teaching. I got to draw my affections in and set my affections, direct my affections, point my affections, be intentional about my affections. I got to draw them in and give them focus, give them a direction and be intentional about it. See, people are trying to draw people. Jesus didn't make it easy for people by telling them, he told them the truth. If you're going to follow me, you're going to have to take up your cross. Deny yourself. But so what are people t- d- see then when you're trying to tell people about the kingdom without telling them about the kingdom the way Jesus told them about the kingdom? What are you trying to tell them about the kingdom that's different than what Jesus said? I said, hello, can Holy Spirit preach tonight? What are you telling the people about the kingdom that's different than what Jesus said? Hello? People are trying to water down what's real to try to get people to draw to Christ. And let me tell you something. You're not giving them the real deal. They're going to have to find the real deal anyway. And then you get them saying, I didn't sign up for all this. What did you think you signed up for?
What did you think Christianity was about? Who lied to you? And again, see an enabler, not necessarily intentional because they're trying to build the church, but you can't build the church your way. It's God's way. If Jesus said, if anyone's going to come after me, he must take up his cross, deny himself and follow me. That's what it is. I can't tell you, you don't have to take up your cross. I can't tell you, you don't have to deny yourself. <laughs> Read on, guys. Do what? Set your affection on what? Things above. Not on what? Things above. Discipleship training lesson one, one, one. A disciple learns, develops, practices, setting their affection, giving their direction, the affection focus, giving it a sense of direction and, and intention. That's a discipleship training. You're not like the world. At least you're not supposed to be. Let me say we. We're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be like the world. There's supposed to be some kind of distinction. Don't you expect a distinction when you say, somebody says, I'm a Christian, don't you expect something to be different about them? Huh? Amen. And then when you start hearing them talk, you'd be like, who? You don't say nothing, but you'd be like, hmm. 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 You say you what? Huh? But see, but that stuff that's obvious to other people, but do you understand how God could be saying, you say you love me? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Can God look at your affections and see that you love him? Could God bear measure the fruit of your selfish ambition in equivalent to your fruit in the kingdom and he see that you love him? <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said, could God do it? Not your neighbor, not your mother. Not, see, I'm telling you, die to the opinions of men because really when you're living for the opinions of men, you're living beneath. But when we begin to live before Christ and be like, Lord, I really need you to examine, that's the highest level living. See, and people are trying to gain all this stuff to gain the approval of people. Man, it's the lowest level of living. We need to be living in light of how God, hey God, how do you see this? Where, where, where do I line up? See, so, so when I say this to you, does, does, can God see that you love him if you measure the fruit of your selfish ambition versus the fruit you bear in the kingdom? Could he see that you love him? See, 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 what we teaching tonight. Somebody say discipleship teaching. Discipleship teaching. Discipleship teaching. And see, this, this, this is not about, mom, what you think about me? I'm not asking you to go ask somebody else. Hey, do you think, if I ask you, do you think I'm a Christian? No, I ain't asking you to ask nobody. What I am asking you to do is get before the king of kings and lord of lords, the highest level of living, and say, father, let's be real. Come on, let me know where I stand. Huh? At the highest level of living. <laughs> and then let God be honest with you. Don't change his voice to meet your voice. Well, God told me I was all right. <laughs> God told me we're all falling short. <laughs> but just make sure the voice you hear is God's voice. Huh? Not the one you want to be compromised and make you feel good about yourself. Hello? Well, you know, we're all trying to make it, Jack. Yeah, we are. But I didn't talk about Jack. I ain't talking about let pastor measure. I said let the king of kings and lord of lords let you see. Does your selfish ambition fruit 
is it equal or greater than the fruit you produce in the kingdom? Because which one you think you're going to be rewarded for? Or which one you think you're going to be rebuked for? You think your selfish ambition, God's thinking anything about that for your eternity? God wants you to have nice things. God's okay with that. God has no problem with that. But what God wants you to understand is you got to trust him that he's going to provide all those things for you. But you must trust him. See, as a disciple, we must trust him. We must trust him because some of us don't really trust him like that. God, mm, ah, mm, I think you want me to take care of me. So I'm going to make sure I got this. God, you just make sure you got that. No, God got it all. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and all that dwell therein. <laughs> all of it belongs to him. How much of it? All. How much of it? All. And he distributes to every man according to their several ability. <laughs> See, woo, selfish ambition could get you out farther than you can swim. <laughs> woo, you'll be drowning out there in them waters you're trying to swim in because <laughs> you was trying to do it because you wanted it when you wanted it and you didn't want God to do it because you didn't trust him to give it to you and his timing because he knows what's right for you, when it's right for you. I say he knows what's right for you and he knows when it's right for you. I said, he knows what's right for you. And he knows when it's right for you. I said, he knows what's right for you. And he knows when it's right for you. See, the ones who need to be writing it down still need to be writing this down. He knows what's right for you. And he knows when it's right for you. He knows when you're ready to be married. He knows when you're willing to submit. He knows when you're willing to give an answer. He knows when you're willing to stand for righteousness and you won't compromise him for him. Or you won't compromise him for her. <laughs> ah, God gave some of us certain things. He knows <laughs> it would draw you right out of his kingdom. He knows what's right for you <laughs> and he knows when it's right for you. That's why we have to set our affection on those things above and not on those things beneath. See, but in order for us to be non-enablers, we got to get this together in our heart. Otherwise, you'll be passive with people. Ah, oh, girl, you know, go do your thing. Our right, homeboy, get that, get that, man. Go for that, go for that, go for that. And you know their life in Christ is not there. And you're supposed to be provoking one to good works. You're supposed to be a minister of the gospel, teaching people about what's important and what's priority. But have you been conformed to the passions of the world, drunken by the lust of the flesh? So now you're preaching the doctrine of devil. Ha <laughs> ha, huh? Yeah, but I didn't intend on doing it. It's still yet the same. I didn't intend to cause people to pursue the lust of their flesh, the, the lust of their eye, and the pride of life. I didn't intend on my passive behavior doing it, but yet it's the same. What do you think we're going to stand before God and give an account for? <laughs> what are you waiting on me to tell you otherwise? What do you think I'm supposed to be teaching you and training you up in? What do you think I'm supposed to be encouraging you in righteousness with? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Not trying to train you to lie. I'm not trying to train you to teach doctrines of the devil. I'm trying to train you to grow up in the kingdom, to grow up in Christ, to be clothed and conformed and clothed and conformed. Christ being formed in us, clothed in humility, teaching what's right, admonishing what's right, living what's right. 
Hello. That's what we come together for. To be raised up in the kingdom. To bear fruit in Christ. Hello. Come on, I'm a, this one. I got, I got three more minutes, right? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Matthew 6, 19. Y'all all right? Yeah. I love you guys. I love y'all so much. Y'all have no idea. But guess what? God love you more, and I'm excited about what God is doing. Y'all ready? Matthew 6 and 19. Read. Lay not. Lay not, lay not. First two words, lay not up for yourselves what? And see, what he's, he's not telling you not to have anything. What he's telling you is don't have a fixation, a wrong passion, a wrong embracement of the stuff in this earth. He's not telling you you can't have things. What he's telling you is don't let things have you. You're so concerned about that new car, you're pushing God out of his place in your life to get it. You're so concerned about saving enough money to put a down payment on that house that you push Christ aside to get it. You're so concerned, and who are you trying to prove something to? You push the one that matters aside. Whoo, shout out about cussing. That's what he's saying when you lay not up for yourself. Don't push me aside for your selfish ambitions. Who are you trying to prove something to? Am I not the one that matters? Push him aside for lengthy vacation so you don't have to work in the kingdom, so that you won't produce fruit. What are you going to say when you get up there and you won't vacation so long that you have no fruit? Lay not up for yourselves. Can you see it here? He's not saying you can't have stuff. What he's saying is, I will I'll provide for you, but don't push me aside to get the stuff. It's temporal. It has no eternal value. It'll come according to your seven ability, according to your time, according to your relationship with me, according to you allow me to bless you like I can, like I will, but let me do it. Somebody say, I got to trust him with that. No, say it again. I got to trust him with that. No, you got to write this down because I'm going to tell you something. Even though we're saying it, let me tell you, it's easier said than done. Trusting God, we got to train to trust him. Because you've been lied to so long. You can't tell me you just train, you just trust God overnight. I know that's not true. But in order for us to really have this true scripture alive in our lives, we really got to trust him. I got to trust God that he has my best interest at heart. I got to trust God that he's always on time with my life. I got to trust God when the pauses in my life seem to be exasperated. What do I mean when I say that? When what I'm believing or expecting doesn't happen when I expect it to happen. I got to trust him with those pauses in my life. Ha, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the word of God minister to you. We got to trust him with the pauses. And we'll pick up next week. Mm -hmm.